Welcome back, Crusaders, to the Nerd Crusade Podcast. This is episode 66. I'm your host, Ian, and with me as always, Courtney. Hello. Uh, this week, we uh, don't a whole lot to talk about, but we got a few things to talk, to talk about. All because of me. Um, this game, sorry, another late episode, but it's because we were sick, and hey, if you're sick, we're going to take our time off to to rest up and give you 100% voice of scraggly coffee voice the entire time. So uh, oh, That's what you like to do. You yeah. like to give the scraggly <laughs> a voice. Try not to if I can. Sounds so wonderful. Yes. So <laughs> uh, this week we're going to be talking about two TV shows that we've checked out. Uh, one we've watched all of, the other one we've just watched the first two episodes. Um, but both are pretty interesting. One is kind of divisive. Some people like it. Some people really hate it. Um, it was a surprise because we didn't think we what we watch it, but we actually binged the whole thing in one night because it was excellent. Yeah, it was honestly <laughs> three minutes, it. six episodes being thirty minutes was only like three hours of your time. So it's just an extended movie. That's and it, all, and it was worth watching the whole thing anyway. Yeah, uh, that would be the new Knuckles TV show miniseries that came out on Paramount Plus on the twenty sixth, I think. Yes. Um. Surprisingly very good. I mean, this is the same quality of the Sonic movies. and Yeah, they did not skimp on any of the production value at all with this, which was very nice to see. Yeah, and the, and the whole thing was very much like a direct continuation after the Sonic 2 movie. Yeah, so you would have to have watched the first Sonic movie and the second Sonic movie. To kind of understand what the hell's going yeah. on. If you hadn't watched the Sonic movies, you'll kind of be like, what? Okay, this is weird. Why are they here? Yeah. What's going on? Who they are have people? a brief summary in the first episode, but you really do need to watch the two movies to understand what's going on. Yeah. And honestly, this is for the people who watched the movies and enjoyed those movies. Yeah, and those those movies for video game adaptation, they're perfectly fine. Like they're clearly family films for kids and whatnot. Um, but they are still entertaining to watch and this mm-hmm. is definitely a family uh miniseries for family and kids to watch. Um, it's still well entertaining and everything. Yes. Um, the people who were behind both friendly bow finger. Yeah, definitely. And the people <laughs> behind creating it definitely um were inspired by it very def- heavily. Definitely were, but were also very much um very much knew how to use their budget very wisely. Yes. Um, they the- went to Reno, not, not Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, there's jokes about that, but they also have a great cast. They have the guy who played the mountain in No, 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 not the mountain, not the mountain. Um, the dot, the, the hound, hound from Game, the of Thrones. Game of Thrones, also known as the Yarp guy from Hot Fuzz. <laughs> That's all you remember him from is the Yarp. Because when you see it, you can't unsee that he's Yarp. <laughs> um, so and has Idris Elba coming back and playing as Knuckles. Excellent has, job. He chews it up. Has the same cast as uh, from the movies of the people who return who return the, uh, with the roles, such as uh, the deputy, the sheriff's wife, the deputy uh, Wade Whipple is the, technically the main character in this. Yes. And then we have um, characters like uh, his mom, who's played by Stockyard uh, Channing, who is actually a very famous actress. Seen her in lots of stuff. Like what, Ian? As you quickly look on IMDb. <laughs> Practical Pract- Magic. That's yeah. it. And she was also, in, she was Rizzo in Greece. That's where I really know her from. That's where Vegas is from. Okay. She's um, had plastic surgery, so it's a little hard sometimes. Yeah, she definitely had a lot of plastic surgery. Uh, Christopher Lloyd plays the voice of one of the, uh, of Knuckles' chief echidna. Yes. Chief Pakanaka Mac, which they just say call him Mac. Yes. So Chief Mac. Yep. Um, you have, uh, Ellie Taylor, who plays Jet, uh, Sassy in Ted Lasso, is yes. our head, like, pro- uh, antagonist, other than the, the Hound, uh, Roy, uh, McCann. I loved her. Um, she does a great job. You have Kid Cuddy, who, he does decent, but, like, Kid Cuddy is, like, desperately trying to be an actor, like, trying to, he's, like, I feel like he's trying to be, like, uh, ludicrous. Oh, but like yeah. Ludacris got real su- was real successful in acting. Well, well he kind of was kind of like not as good as an actor, well, but he really fair, loves Sonic, so that's why he's here. Yeah, well, to be fair, Ludacris really lucked out with the Fast and Furious franchise. Yeah, Ja Rule kind of missed the boat on that. Yeah, so because Kid Cudi's not even the list of characters. Carrie Elwes is also in this, which was a big surprise. Yes, he was so delightful. Yeah, he was as Pistol Pete. Yes. Um, so definitely, this costuming was amazing. Definitely really good. Um, I want to say there's one other 
character here who I'm not seeing listed who was like the guy played his friend. Jackson Sinclair. Julian Barrett. He 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 is like such a weird character, but he's like one of the best it's characters. So um he's from the Mighty Boosh, which is probably the biggest uh thing biggest T V series I've heard at least of mm-hmm. that. Um Yeah. Bob's Burgers, he was in a couple episodes. Yeah, he plays the character Ian. Um, yeah, it looks like he's done lots, lots of small like, things, mostly TV series, but he is hilarious in this and basically steals every scene he's in. And there's a whole episode where he does a rock a rock opera, yes. which was... was the best episode. Great. I yeah. wanted to see that in real life. Yeah. Because the production value for that is wow. And it's done all practically. Yeah, because for me, like, where they use the CGI is just Knuckles and anything kind of around him, basically. A lot of other stuff is really practical. So the stunts in this show are done really, really well. Mm-hmm. The Like we said, the rock opera has probably a few CGI elements, but you don't notice what's what, really. They use a lot of practical effects to tell the, st- the history and story of background of Knuckles. And they do it in a really interesting, fun way with that rock opera. Yes. Um, definitely, very surprisingly, very good. Uh the premise is definitely silly. That's why it's a kid's show or kind of a kid's family family show, right? Yeah. Kid event. Yeah. Basically, after the events of Sonic 2, Knuckles is now living with Sonic and Tails uh, at their house. But he at can't, Donut Lord's house. Yeah, but he can't adjust to the peaceful life of Green Hill Zone because... Green he, Hill Zone? <laughs> well, they live in Green Hill, but, but it's basically supposed to be Green Hill Zone, right? <laughs> but basically, he's too caught up in being a warrior and wanting to destroy stuff. He literally attacks well, the people. Well, to protect. Yeah, he attacks the construction workers who are trying to fix the house. Yeah. He sets the living room up as, like, an arena for the dog to fight the mailman. <laughs> yep, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Sonic basically... You really only see Sonic and Tails, I think, really in the first episode. Yeah, that's the only time you see Sonic and Tails. Yeah, and they're only there to try kind of tell him, hey, you need to... Adjust. <laughs> you need to calm down and chill. And that's when he runs into kind of Wade Whipple, who is the deputy in the movies. Um, and Wade's big thing is he's trying to go to a bowling tournament. So this whole thing is a buddy story about two guys going to Reno for a bowling tournament. Very much kingpin-ish, almost. It's like, very kingpin. They, they have lots and like... I meant kingpin. Why did I say bowfinger? I, I have know. no idea. Yeah, kingpin, <laughs> but like not as not as adult as kingpin. Kingpin has like lots of dirty jokes and like... It's a is, tamer version This is a kid's kingpin. version of kingpin, basically. Yeah. Uh, and they, they reference kingpin because like they even says I'll be months in doubt here, which is like a joke in kingpin about how yeah. months in... Meant, Meant to be stranded or up the creek without a paddle, and that was the guy main character's name. Um, they have the copied scene of like Bill Murray pulling out the bowling ball with a rose. Carrie always pulls out his bowling ball and has a teacup in it because he's like Lord British almost. Uh, wearing his whole outfit's like is the Jack Russell flag, basically. Yes, Jack um, Russell, not Jack Russell, was it Union, Union Jack? Jack the <laughs> Union Jack flag, still on medication. Our brains yeah. are not working. Um, but basically, the plot is that as soon as Knuckles and Wade leave Green Hill Zone, the agents from Gun, which is played by uh, Ellie Taylor and Kid Cuddy, are kind of going rogue and they're trying to capture Knuckles so they can sell his quills off to uh, Roy McCann's character, who is Robotnik's like protege scientist who's building weapons based off the quills, which is kind of like just a side kind of plot really like it's really yeah. only handled in the first two episodes and like the very last episode yeah they kind of forget about it a little bit in the middle yeah because they're basically <laughs> all about the bowling tournament trying to get Wade so that he can like be more confident and be a warrior like knuckles is taking him under his wing as a protege and the bowling alley is his battlefield and it turns out that this whole thing turns into wade trying to find his dad who abandoned him in a tj max who his dad turns out to be pistol pete who was Carrie Elway's, who ditched him to be a, a professional bowler in Reno, of all places, because he's not at, good enough to be a professional bowler in Vegas. <laughs> um, but, like I said, the production value of this was really, really good, like, through the roof, like, I'm well. amazed how much money they threw into this. And also, can we talk about the soundtrack for this show? Oh, yeah, because Wade's big thing is that he made, he made uh, CDs of rock music in the 90s. You know, your CD mixtapes? Yeah, he basically made mm-hmm. those. And so, like, the soundtrack is a bunch of, like, great, like, 90s bangers and everything. 
wonderful. It's wonderful. I on Spotify you can get the CD mixtape uh, to listen to. It has all the music on there, and it's freaking amazing. How sexy look up the playlist is. Um, yeah, you just type in Knuckles into Spotify, and it should be the first uh, thing that pops up. Uh, Knuckles original playlist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of video game music. So that's probably not the right one. No, Paramount City soundtrack radio. Okay, so there's yeah. a bunch of stuff in there. Yeah, they have a yeah. Ton the Flames of Disaster in- featuring Marco Bold. No, that's actually in the show. Yeah. Um, gotta go fast. Yep, Sonic theme. Uh, Don't stop me now by Queen. Uh, Warrior should be in there. Centuries from Fallout Boy. Kings and Queens. Three Seconds to Mars. Yeah. Regardless, the soundtrack is really, really good. Definitely check that out. Um, the whole show is really fun to watch, and like I said. The 30-minute episodes, so six episodes is only three hours of your time, um, so you can make an evening of it. And as ridiculous as it is, it's really fun, um, because basically, instead of like where Sonic is in the movies is always the comedy guy and uh, Lord Donut the Sheriff, basically Cyclops guy, dude was yeah. the straight man, here it's Knuckles reversed. is the straight man <laughs> and Wade Whipple is kind of the comedy joke guy. Um, but it works so well. And it works really well, surprisingly, especially the way Idris Elba plays it. Um, and I'd be excited to see if they do another like mini series or when they do the movie with uh, Keanu Reeves' uh, Shadow. Oh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, Idris Elba said he's really, he'd be excited to work with uh, Keanu Reeves again. Mm-hmm. Um, so, definitely great because everybody plays a role 100% and nobody's just half assing it or just doing it for phoning it in for a paycheck. Uh, Carrie Elways goes all out. Everybody goes all out on this. The action stunts are quite amazing. The fact that, like, at one point he gets Wade gets hooked by the foot and dragged down the stairs of a porch and down the street by a motorcycle. Yes, that stunt was done really well. Like, it looked painful. The guy like mm-hmm. did it really well. Um, the whole rock opera episode is by probably, far, probably the, the best. best one. Yes, um, it really is kind of a pause in the story to tell you the background of Knuckles and like his entire backstory. But um, the practical way they did it was great, and <laughs> the fact that uh, um, Julian Burr, who basically ends up like being the main singer narrator of the story, the way he plays his character is great, and it fits perfectly. I want to see more of him. Yeah, it'd be great. You'd look, he kind of got, got defeated in, in a jousting duel where he got his ponytail cut off, which is hilarious. And then he lost his jacket and his shirt and ran away, screaming, don't look at me. In front of a bunch of children. Yeah, it was hilarious. It's um, great. Definitely worth a watch. And um, so if you have Paramount Plus, i definitely check it out. Uh, was it would, be wor- would it be worth buying Paramount Plus for? Probably not alone. I would say if you like some of the reality shows like Amazing Race, Survivor, if you want a service that has a good chunk of the old Nickelodeon stuff on it. Um, and you know, early some 90s stuff. before the... Before all the bad <laughs> shit happened. Yeah. Uh, before that, the diddling. Yeah, before they started diddling people. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that stuff is there. That would make it worth getting Paramount+. Plus. Um as far as their shows go, like original shows that Paramount wa- has made that we've watched, we watched the Halo show, which was fucking terrible and horrible. The Sonic sh- movies have been decent and have a good adaptation of like the video game and the spirit of what the game is supposed to be. And I feel like this is a good continuation of that. Mm-hmm. People who didn't like this show or thought it was terrible were very much... I think they're being too critical. Like You gotta remember, this is for people who like the Sonic movies. It's for the kids out there. It's actually really good for that. I yes. feel like I had no no problem like letting a kid watch this show, um, let them watch the Sonic films, and something like the whole family could watch and it's all fun with. Yeah, I, I like the subtle adult humor in the back, which is what a lot of family movies have, and I love that. <laughs> yeah, um, like even the ridiculousness of how like Wade and his sister act, it seems really weird and childish, but it actually fits that but, universe. Yeah, well, and, also. My sister and I do that to each other too. <laughs> yeah, but your sister's not pretending like she's in the like that she's in the FBI. She's super important. 
Right? No, like, but we, we annoy each other to that point of one-upping. Yeah. Um, Maybe not stabbing each other with forks yet. Yeah, she stabs him with the fork in the dinner, dinner episode, like, out of frustration. It's like, what the fuck? It's so funny. Um, but it's great moments. It's really, fun. really good show. I definitely recommend it. Check that out. Yep. Um, Especially if you've watched the first two movies, this is a great continuation. Yep. If you didn't like the first two movies, then skip it. Yeah. So, the next show is something that came out on Netflix recently. Yes. It's actually listed in the top ten TV shows right now. Yes. I, uh, I made you watch this. Yeah, I checked out the first two episodes that you like you did. It's called Dead Boy Detectives. It's actually really interesting. And the kind of key thing that piqued my interest is what you said is that it was written by Neil Gaiman. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after watching it, it does take place in the same universe as... Uh, Sandman because yes, I de- left that part out so you could discover yeah. it on your own. So because there's one scene where Death shows up and it's actually the same actress who's playing her uh, in from this, the Sandman from, from show. The Sandman show. Uh, so this does take place in the same world. This is based off of another comic book that Neil Gaiman wrote as well. So it, it's all in the same universe. The premise is that there's these two dead. Well, it's called the Dead Boy Detectives. Yeah, I already said what the title. Oh, is. I didn't hey, listen. I um, didn't pay attention to you. <laughs> but the premise is that the Dead Boys are two ghosts who are like ghost detectives for ghosts in London. Um, one died in ni- in the 1980s, and the other one died in like uh, 1916. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before World War One or whatnot, um, and you get kind of you learn kind of what their backstories were as the show goes on. But basically, they take a case where they have to uh, exercise a demon from a psychic, and then this ends up taking them to Port Townsend, Washington, which is <laughs> basically the town next to where Courtney grew up, which is hilarious. And anytime they like they film anything in Washington, or they play something in Washington, because they definitely didn't film it there, it's really hilarious because like they make Port I, Townsend I so hard. They make Port Townsend look really big. It's like no, it's not that no. big of a town. It's not that <laughs> so tiny. Um, but there's a lot of interesting stuff. It looks more say. like Port Angeles, if anything. I would say the show, for the first two episodes, remind me a lot like of Grimm. Yes. Where it's like a detective show with a uh, bunch of supernatural stuff, but it's in the Sandman universe. So there's going to be kind of references to things like that. Um, so basically, after like they help uh, exercise the demon from the psychic girl, she gets involved in finding a, of working a case of a missing girl who's uh, takes them to Port Townsend to work through their shenanigans. The Briti- the kid, the ghost boy that died in 1916 gets trapped in Port Townsend, so he, they can't leave. Because of cats. Yeah. Because apparently you don't pat- cast magic on cats, and he did, and got in a kerfuffle with the, with the Cat King. Um, <laughs> where This is where it's like it's like Grimm mixed with, um, I think the show is called Good Girl. Good. Okay. The one where the girl is a succubus. Oh yes, it has. I, that it gives me a feeling a little bit of that show as well. Okay, um, because I dealt with lots of supernatural stuff, but like, it's interesting that like the Cat King wanted basically wa- wants to wants to screw the guy. The guy's like he's from 1916, so like the concept of homosexuality is offensive to him completely, just because time. No, but he's in. but you, you see the way he looks. Yeah, he's, there's a look. <laughs> so they're stuck in Port. They're stuck in Port Townsend until he counts all the cats or has sex with the Cat King. Well, they so, he, they didn't say have sex with. Me. He has to make the ha- Cat King happy, and the Cat King had a few suggested ideas. Yeah, it's called ear scratchies. Yeah, and then he also <laughs> uh, pissed off a witch while they were there. Cause she, he pissed off the witch because they were getting the little girl that they came that to the Port Townsend. Kidnapped. So but the witch is also upset to the fact that they're trapped there. So now yes. she has two people that are not going to let her kidnap children so she can keep her youth. And they can't leave. And basically, by the end of the second episode, their detective agency is now set up in Port Townsend. Um, it's actually very, very interesting. I do like uh, where they're going with it. I like the concept that they're also hiding, running away from death because mm-hmm. they don't want her to take them to the afterlife because they enjoy staying amongst the living, but well, and helping out and their helping fellow out ghosts. ghosts. Yeah. The whole thing was like, instead of being like ghosts, who help the living. Their whole gimmick was they were ghosts who help other ghosts mm-hmm. that so they can move on this case with the psychic girl was the first one was like, I right, want to help this ghost help her friend who's been possessed. Yeah. Um, but she ends up sti- sticking around with them and getting where they end up getting stuck in Port Townsend. Um, 
it's real hilarious to us because we know what Port Townsend is like. We know what Washington is like. So like them filming it in Pacific, filming it in a location that's supposed to be the Pacific Northwest is always interesting to see. Um, especially when they never film anything over here because <laughs> it's too expensive. Well, to be fair, they have filmed pl- plenty of films and television shows in Port Townsend, but nothing recent. Yeah, because the film initiative here in Washington State yeah. is shit. But like, that's besides the, the point. Back in the 90s, they used to film stuff in Washington. They don't film yes. anything up there anymore. Yes. Uh, they'll use Vancouver, uh, yes, Canada very- instead. <laughs> but very interesting and very unique characters. Which kind of give you uh, more of an insight to this world that Sandman built. Mm-hmm. So if you watch Sandman and you enjoy that, I think you'll watch this and you'll enjoy this quite a bit. Um. I mean, I think by the end of the second episode where they had captured the two dandelion pixies, yes. like, they, those two characters are not, they don't have a lot of lines, but they're very funny. Yeah. And just, like, their attitude is hilarious. They had a right amount of comedy. Yeah. And I like the look and the uh, color color scheme they're going with uh, for the for this show as well. It's really nice. Yeah, and there's a lot of, like, it looks like, um, kind of not, not necessarily no names, but, like, up-and-coming actors. Like, we mm-hmm. have a lot of people here that we've seen before. Um, but really, really entertaining. It's on Netflix. It's, like, it's in the top ten of their uh, TV shows right now. I believe it's eight episodes, hour each episode. Uh, so, definitely recommend so far. It's been a good watch. We'll probably finish it up this week. And then we'll give our final thoughts on it. Yeah. Um, but... As far as supernatural shows go, like we've seen a couple that have come out, like uh, I think Gargoyles out of Germany. There's a few other, like in, mm-hmm. up from other places where that have like kind of the right idea, but they don't have the budget to do the special effects right. Where I feel like this, this has show has the, the right budget, yes, and it's doing a good mixture of uh, of the special effects to where it's not like all completely CG and kind of pulls you out of it. It's done right. The characters are played right. Of uh, Teenage punk kid from the eighties playing a British punk kid in the eighties playing against a British posh boy from the, from nineteen sixteen works really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, and you kind of see how they're opposites to each other. Uh, the demon that is kind of stalking the uh, psychic girl is, that seems really interesting because her old bit is after they exercise the demon, he took a bunch of her memories with him, so she has no idea who she is or where her family is. So she's kind of sticking with the, them so that they can try and get her memories back. And like gr- like Grimm, it's going to lead to them running to a bunch of other uh, things. Mm-hmm. So definitely worth checking out. If you like Sandman, you'll like this. Check this out while we wait for Sandman Season 2. Yeah. Um, cause Sandman I, I feel like this is going to be a nice filler to fill that void. Yeah, I don't know. Was, did Sandman ever get a uh, greenlit? I don't know. Two? I don't know if it's on my head. You can look it up real quick. I hope so because I really like it, and you know they have a lot more to explore. <laughs> Sandman season two is in production. Yay! So this is a good filler in between it um, for that universe and get a little more insight. I'd love to see where they go next with Sandman. Yes. And I'd love to see more of a crossover if the next season of Sandman has the Detective Boys in it. That would be interesting, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so definitely check that out. That's on Netflix. Um, really interesting show. We thought it was really good. Um, as far as gaming news, there was a bunch of indie stuff that was announced. Uh, Bethesda also announced that they are going to have a summer showcase coming up uh, in a month or two. Yes. Uh, they did also announce today their next big update for Starfield will include the map update that everybody's been wanting. Ah. So all the maps now are going to have a geographical... Um, layout, so you'll actually be able to see what buildings are where, what the geographical layout is around them. So instead of just being a grid with like, here's a dot where this is, here's a dot where that is, Mm -hmm. you'll actually kind of see a topographical map. The one that they showcased in their video was um, of uh, New Atlantis, I think is the name of the the main city, right? I can't remember. I haven't played played Starfield in a while. But like the main one of the main yes, city New hall. Atlantis is the name of the main. So city. they showed that, and you actually can see the tower of it and whatnot. But I mean, one criticism is when you turn on the scanner, though, they put markers for where everything is at. Oh, so it's really cluttered. <laughs> I think that's because when you have a marker on the scanner, you can fast travel directly to it instead of having to walk over there. Uh huh. So they marked like all the stores, all the locations, and like you can literally 
But that well, was kind of the one of the fun parts of being in New Atlantis is exploring. Yeah, but that's the whole thing is that they're listening to the complainers too much. Fair. Um, but they did have good news saying, yeah, they are working on their first vehicles for vehicle tra- travel on planets. Oh, and they showed a, helpful. They did show a clip of a guy like in a four-wheel vehicle driving around uh, as they're developing that. That's not going to be in the next update, but it is confirmed that they're working on it. Good. Um, they're adding a harder difficulty. Okay. And a performance mode for like 60, well, more like finite performance mode, I guess, and like options to find, to finesse that a little bit more uh which will be good um, question though okay, are they fix- going to fix the uh crashing? crashing yeah i don't know i played it for over an hour day it didn't crash oh so oh. maybe it I'm is fixed shocked. maybe not i don't oh. know you, but like historically it's been like 60 minutes it crashes and it i played for more than 60 minutes a day and it did not crash i am shocked yeah. so that the new update is not out yet that it will be out it's out on the steam beta right now Mm -hmm. and it'll be out on all platforms later this month okay um but that (laughs) well there there's the cough there's the scratch so that's coming out later this month uh once they put all the patches we'll probably go over all that okay but so far it looks it looks good um what so they're adding uh difficulty performance stuff and they're changing all the maps so they actually look better uh that'll be interesting to see um, so it sounds like they're kind of going on the right, the right path. They are listening to people who are complaining about, uh, the game. Uh, like I said, I think some things are going to be a little bit too cluttered, but we'll have to see if you can adjust that in your HUD or whatnot. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, the Fallout 4 update came out, but it's not necessarily broken, but it takes up to three minutes for it to load on a console. Ew. Like, not, and not, it's not to load your save. It's literally just to go from title screen to main menu. It goes to a black loading screen and loads for about three minutes, and then you'll get to your screen where you can go continue load, new game, or whatnot, and then the game will play fine after that. It's just, for some reason, we have to wait three minutes for it to load a menu. Uh huh. Don't know why it's, it's doing that. have no idea how to fix it. There's nobody report seems to be reporting that issue, but at least that's what uh, is happening to us on it. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there. Um, other than that, Everybody's just kind of waiting to see what the summer showcases are for all the game companies to see what's coming out. Uh, Like I said, there's not a whole lot really interesting. We might pick up uh, Sandland, because after looking at that and being a vehicle combat game, that looked more interesting than just a open world desert wandering game. Uh, Vehicle combat sound a lot more interesting, uh, because you don't have a lot of just vehicle combat games uh, out there anymore, and being... Kind of like the last hurrah for the guy who made the, the design Dragon Ball mm-hmm. uh, and everything. This should be pretty interesting. Uh, I think a lot of people who have played it have said it's been very good. The people who have not liked it don't seem to me like they're people who aren't familiar with the uh, manga that it came from or the anime mm-hmm. or anything like that. Um, or you know, even the creator. Or even the creator, As yeah. well. Because uh, this is very much like his style of storytelling yeah and i think like if you understand where, where that's coming from you'll enjoy the, you'll probably enjoy it um we'll get our hands on it probably the end of this week and then we'll uh give you a first impressions video and all that on there too. Okay. okay but that is our show for now it's a little short show this week but we will be back next week with uh more dead boy detectives uh, and something else i'll make you and watch yeah, Maybe okay. we'll talk about Amazing Race. No, we're not going to talk about reality shows. We'll talk about reality shows. No, because reality shows just going to have us talking about how stupid people are. Exactly. We're not going to go over We that. love that. So, <laughs> we'll have other stuff to talk about, because uh, there are some movies that are going uh, to start coming out um, here in the, Maybe in the summer. M- more shows. Doctor Who's starting now. Yeah. Doctor Who's going to be got, starting up. We got, there's stuff in May. I need to look. Yeah. So, we'll have that coming up through May, um, and we'll be putting up uh, a few more videos and whatnot. So, uh, we'll see you then. You can find us at nerdcrusade.com, yep. where you can find all our articles, news, um, podcasts, obviously, any of our videos that we put up. Uh, We're on YouTube. Has a direct link to the Twitch stream at uh, twitch.tv slash nerdcrusade. Yeah. So, you can watch our streams there, where uh, we play usually on Wednesdays and Thursdays, uh, and games we play are very because I just play whatever. Um, so, What are you going to play tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to make you play tomorrow. I don't know. I will 
I'm thinking maybe Resident Evil. I'm pretty sure I can get through Resident Evil 4, maybe. There you go. So, we'll be playing some games. Come check it out. Come hang out. We'll see you then. Uh, until then, have a great day. Bye.